Good morning. Um, so I thought I might start out this morning going through a little dive into what's the what are the trumpets or all all of the times that the word trumpets used. And you know what? I need to I need to write this down because <laughs> I'm gonna forget the Strong's number. Okay. And I want to come back to it. Um, it's always best if you. So this app is eSword. If you haven't heard of eSword, eSword is very, very useful. You can search English words, but what you are better off doing, you you search the English word, and then you find the Strong's number, and then you search it based on that Greek number and what it does is it gives you every time that that Greek word is used in the New Testament and the, there's also Hebrew so you get to see the concept it's it's more like a it really becomes like a picture book when you get to see it and you get a theme you get a little taste of what does that word what's the Really, what's the feeling behind it? What what are the contexts that it's used in? Because most of the time you'll start to see it used consistently. And this isn't so much about taking just the dictionary definition, which is not always a bad thing, but sometimes it doesn't give you the flavor, you know? And um, I when I search Trump trumpet and really this one is like the trumpet sound um that is this g4537 this word and i'll i'll tap on it uh sapizzo um the sound or the blast of a trumpet uh this first one gives <laughs> gives you an idea uh, and I thought it was so interesting that the first time that this sound of a trumpet is used in Matthew, it's Jesus speaking against the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And well, when thou doest alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, um, th there's, a, there's a contrast of a flavor that I get when I'm looking at this. The, the reward of the wicked that would seek glory before men. The sound of a trumpet. There is nothing. There is nothing calming. About the sound of a trumpet. A trumpet is. a prepar It's an instrument for the preparation of war. There is not a lot of note distinction between in a shofar. A, a, maybe a silver trumpet there might be you know plenty of no distinction that you can have but the sound of a trumpet and Jesus says they have their reward the reward of the wicked at the sound of the trumpet those who would seek glory before men the hypocrites in the synagogues and the, and the streets. This is the first picture I see of the trumpet, and it's not a it's not a not a good thing. <laughs> but on the other side, when we see what grace is and what the sound of the trumpet does for us, this when we hear the voice of our savior and that is what we're 
That is what we're waiting for. We're going to hear him. The Lord shall descend with a shout. Personally, I'm looking for that voice. To turn and, and behold the, the voice that speaks with me and says, come up here. And God is going to reward openly the things that were done in secret. The hidden things that he was able to work into us by his grace. And it's all just receiving grace. It's available to everybody. There's no great mighty work you need to do being a hypocrite in the synagogue or in the street. No. There's no glory before men in what God is doing, working Christ into us. It is the foolishness of preaching the base things of the world. Shame the wise. And God... God will glorify us and we will have our reward at the trumpet. So, just a little contrast on that. Um, and I think it's good to keep that keep that in mind that this trumpet is is both for. It, it really, in my mind, it marks the dispensational change. Because this trumpet is a preparation for battle. Okay. And then we see the verse on the rapture. In the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Last trump for the trumpet shall sound. This last trump. This word eschatos is the word that is used for last. It means the last things. It means it's the it's the word where we get our word eschatology. It is the it is it is the beginning of the day of the Lord. It is the beginning of his judgment. It is a call to preparation for battle. The entire world is going to war with Jesus Christ. And he will bring in his kingdom. It is a absolute conquest from the from the start of that trumpet sound. And I think it is so significant that when the body of Christ is removed from the earth, and I don't think I'm going to get any farther um, into looking at the trumpets because I got to start I got to start heading to work. Um, but I think it's when the body of Christ is removed from the earth, something very serious happens. And it's hard to speak to because I want people to come to their own conclusions. It's deep. Yes, it is deep. And there's so many hyper-dispensationalists who want to change salvation in the tribulation to be something of works. And no man will be justified by works. Now, having said that, again, the mark of the beast, not taking the mark of the beast is not something that justifies somebody. Just because you didn't do something does not make you righteous before God. The law does not obtain to... Keeping the law in one point does not, uh, does not cause you to obtain to the righteousness of the law. Because you... And Paul covers this because the, the Israel did not seek it by faith. But they sought it by works of the law. 
nobody never is going to be justified by works of the law. Now, however, God has made covenant promises to Israel that he will do such and such if they do such and such. This is the Mosaic Covenant. Now, God does not base all of his covenants based on the law. There is the covenant of Abraham, which is unconditional. And it is unfulfilled. It still is God. God must, absolutely must, fulfill his promises given in his word which are not based on whether man can man can meet the meet the demand for God to honor it no it's all based on what God said that he would do no matter what man did and that includes the davidic covenant which says that that throne still needs to be occupied on the earth Jesus Christ will reign on the earth physically from Jerusalem. He will rule the nations with a rod of iron. And let me try and get back to my thought. <laughs> I do this all the time. So when the body of Christ is removed, Oh, uh, sorry, one more thing. One more thing I, I feel like it's necessary to say. The, the nation of Israel, part of these, of these promises include the national salvation of Israel. Now, the important thing to, to, to see here is that the blood of bulls and goats, you have to keep salvation. You have to keep salvation, faith alone. Faith alone. It has always been faith alone. Man is justified by faith. The just shall live by faith. There's no other way to live. There's no way that people are going to live in any dispensation other than by faith except for when when faith and hope are no longer a thing which will happen eventually you know these three remain faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love when we see him when we see him will be like him. And, you know, you don't hope for something if you can see it. There will be a day when we will see exactly what we hope for. And we won't we won't have to walk by faith. We'll, we will see him and know him and be fully known. We will be in him and he, and he in us. That's 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 our glorification to be changed so that we will be no longer seeing in a glass darkly but fully known. There are and I think it's important to talk about again, I know I just say it in pretty much every video. But I think it's important to think on these things because it is renewing to the mind and it helps us see distinctions between us and the new covenant with Israel. You know, when the body of Christ is removed, the 
God's God's dealing with Israel is very different from how things happen right now. There is something so special about God's dispensation of grace of the grace of God to the Gentiles. There's something so special about this that when we believe the gospel, when we receive the witness of God, God's record concerning his son, we are born of God by the way of Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection. We are brought into Christ in his death and in his resurrection. We are united with Christ. Made the body of Christ. The bride of Christ. And John the Baptist is a good case study on Israel because John the Baptist said said something very specific and interesting. And you know, Jesus said that of all the law and the prophets, John the Baptist is the greatest. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. Why is John the greatest? Well, if you haven't seen Richard Knucklehead's uh, video about grace, um, you should watch that because that's some good stuff and it's definitely worth your time. He talks about John the Baptist. Um, it was not his last one, but it was the one before that. And it's it's good, very good. Talking about um, John's name and how it means grace and how his his father was a, was a high priest and his mother was a from the line of Aaron and uh, how John was a prophet. Now, John did no mighty miracle, but John had a vision of something that was beyond, which was greater than what could be seen. He had something... John had a fantastic vision of the Christ. He saw the Christ as not just taking away the sins of Israel, which was a revelation that not many people had. They were blinded. There were, you know, their ears, they, their hearts were hardened. Their ears did not hear and their eyes did not perceive their need for salvation in the terms of sin. They thought a, a, a lot of the problem was that the leaders of Israel thought that they could obtain to righteousness by the law. Now we know that there were some, like the angel visited Mary, and Mary understood that Jesus will save his people from their sins. And the woman in the temple, and um, there was another... There was another uh, I can't remember his name, but he said, my eyes have seen the salvation. There was, there were some, but it seems as if it was a remnant. It does seem as if it was a remnant that understood that Jesus would save from sins, that they needed a savior because they weren't righteous. Now, John takes this even further. And he sees something that God is doing that's beyond just the natural and this the and the physical. It says the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now that is that's what's amazing about John's vision. John sees Christ. He sees Christ. And John says something very specific. 
which is is important. John says that he is not the bridegroom, but he is the friend of the bridegroom. Well, if he's the friend of the bridegroom, he is not the bride, but he is the friend of the bridegroom who rejoices, who rejoices. Now, you might need to, to take a look at it, but John the Baptist is an excellent case study. Remember what Jesus said about John. He says, John the Baptist is Elijah, if they will receive him. Well, they didn't receive him. The leaders of Israel rejected him. They said that John has a demon. The friend of the bridegroom, the one who rejoices and joins in the wedding feast, our picture is John the Baptist. That is the picture. Now, John is... If you look at John's life, John has a tribulation saint lifestyle. He's beheaded. He's confused. People, John's disciples are confused about purification. They don't know. They can't. John is, is wondering, should I look for another? He's in that way, I see John typifying a tribulation saint because at that time, I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult for them to perceive. And I do believe that Moses and Elijah will be on the scene preaching Christ and showing the nation of Israel, almost like the Emmaus Road, all the things concerning Christ. And there is a specific plan. And God has given Israel promises that involve physical protection. Now, when I say salvation, the, the, for, for national Israel, there is a sense of salvation in the physical sense. In the physical sense. Now, we have eternal we have eternal life and i'm not saying that they don't get eternal life when they believe on jesus christ but there is a physical aspect to their being saved as a nation all the the na all of israel shall be saved now this will be necessary because of the condition of the earth it will be so bad they will need a physical salvation, which is not the same as eternal salvation. But those who believe in Jesus Christ, which justifies a person, do have physical requirements. Now, I don't, they don't have physical requirements to be saved in the ultimate sense, but to be protected. That is the, I, I want you to see that definition of salvation and how it's used. There is a, a physical saving from the judgments that are coming upon the earth. We who have been reconciled to God by his blood and are in the body of Christ, we are saved from wrath. Now, the nation of Israel... God has already made promises concerning the blessings and the curses in Deuteronomy. And you see a culmination of judgment in Deuteronomy 32, where you can really, really get into some eschatology if you go through Deuteronomy 32. In the judgment of the adversaries, and even some hints towards Mark of the Beast stuff, but The point is that when Elijah comes to restore restore all things, to bring them bring them into the possession of the kingdom, to meet 
those if-then clauses that God has bound himself to. It's his word. He guarantees it. It will be through the preaching of Christ. Receive the Messiah so that they would say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Just like Jesus said, you shall not see me again. That is the restoration, is to receive the Messiah and to be rescued, saved from the judgment that are coming on the earth. So, if you want to, if you like the parable of the ten virgins, it fits. It fits this tribulation saying, and it does a. It is a really good picture to study out John the Baptist and look at where he, where he um, fits in. Thinking about these parables. Uh, and so that's a lot to think on already. Um, I probably should I probably should stop now. Um, but yeah, that is those are my thoughts so far. There's probably more I can get into. Uh, I should continue with the trumpets and how you know even First Corinthians 14 says it's a preparation for battle, but Yet we're not called to prepare for battle. We're, even in that first verse, the trumpet is our reward. And in Revelation, the trumpet speaks with John, saying, come up here. And when he, when he hears the trumpet, he sees Christ in the lampstands. And the lampstands clothed with Christ. Uh, I'll get back to that. <laughs> All right.